<laughs> no, sorry about that. Um, Fred, how might, uh, how are you doing, Fred? Good, Steve, how are you doing today? Good, good. Um, how might Derek Walker help? I know you don't, you don't want to rush into the conversation too much, but in particular, how might he help your shooters? Yeah, you know, the thing Derek will demand as, as he rolls into the paint is he'll demand a lot of attention with, uh, you know, teams having to suck in there because of his ability to finish at the rim. Uh, that'll hopefully open up some things on the perimeter. We have not finished, obviously, very well at the rim, um, you know, really with all of our players, but, uh, you know, particularly, uh, you know, with Ivan. He's gotten a lot better over the last few games, but I think teams will have to suck in there a little bit more, obviously, depending on their pick and roll coverage. If they're in a drop, uh, you know, they'll play more of the pick and roll in a two on two. If they're more aggressive with it, they'll have to sit in that opposite low man, which hopefully will open up some shots uh, either in the corner or in the opposite wing. Uh, but we're all excited to have Derek back. It's been a long time coming. Uh, he's been extremely patient throughout this process. Uh, a lot of highs and lows, ups and downs. Uh, you know, I talked to him even last year when he was with Delano and Shamil about how far off it seems. Uh, but how quickly it's going to go, and then got the disappointing news this year that he would have to sit uh, pretty much the entire suspension that he was given. So, you know, that really was emotional on him, and, uh, you know, he took it hard, but he stayed with it. He did a great job uh, helping prepare, going out and running the other team's stuff, and now he's got to flip that switch uh, being back on the active roster. He hadn't played a game in a long time, so we're going to have to be patient with Derek as he works his way back into game shape uh, and gets his timing right. It's impossible to simulate, especially at this league, and not get an opportunity early in the season against maybe some lesser opponents. So, you know, Derek's going to be, uh, you know, playing a lot of catch up here. We've been trying to get him through the offense pretty much every day, getting him extra work for this exact moment. But, you know, hey, Derek, welcome to the league. You get to go up against Big Williams and Edie, 6'10 and 7'4 in your first game. But he's excited to be back, and we're certainly excited to have him back on the floor. Just real quick, Fred, like what do you – I mean, I don't know if you know for sure, but in ter terms of minutes, what what might we expect with Derek? Yeah, we'll, we'll just – we're going to monitor it closely and see how he's doing. A lot of it will be on how he's feeling out there, Steve. And, you know, if he feels great, we may be able to extend uh, the minutes that we have planned out for him. Uh, if he's getting winded right away, we may have to get him in and out. Uh, so we'll see. A lot of it's going to be by feel. Thank you. Thank you. Robin Washit. Hey, after uh, Michigan State game, Trey said that uh, he kind of took it upon himself to be more aggressive – offensively and that for for this offense to really take off he can't be as passive as he has been in previous games particularly the second half against Ohio State was that something that you know maybe you pushed along to try to get him to be more assertive on the offensive end or is that just kind of him realizing the situation yeah you know Trey and I watch film pretty much after every game and, and we talk about uh, how good he is when he gets in the open floor and when he's in attack mode and I thought he was really aggressive, got to the basket on a couple of occasions. Uh, you know, the other thing I've talked to him a lot about is making sure he attacks smart. And when the defense is loaded back there, and I think he had one late in the game where he tried to attack two or three guys uh, sitting right there at the elbow, uh, you know, that's where the growth has to happen. But I thought he took a huge step in the right direction with his aggressiveness, uh, getting into the paint. Uh, you know, we cleared out a side for him and, and went in there and hammered it. Uh, with authority uh, when we had some action going on on the weak side. There's a lot we can build on in that second half, shooting over 50% uh, overall, scoring 44 points against a really, really good Michigan State uh, defensive team. Uh, you know, So that is something certainly we can build on. We've obviously struggled to score and struggled to shoot as of late, uh, You know, really most, uh, mostly throughout this year. Uh, but we had an offensive game that we can build on with our numbers, almost 50% overall, 50% from the three. Uh, you know, we just got to find a way to do little things. They got two threes on missed rotations that we went over in shoot around that morning by our big, not full rotating out of the post. Uh, we had, uh, you know, an offensive rebound that was just, you know, pretty much sealed it when it was a five point game. We get that with 50 seconds left, cut it to two or three, and, you know, it might be a different outcome. But those little things that are happening, we have to tighten that up. If we can tighten that up, take care of the basketball. 
uh, rebound the ball, which we were phenomenal in the first half. We only gave them one offensive rebound. Uh, and then transition, where they exposed us early and then got a couple on us late. In the middle, we were pretty good. But you know, the, the key points, we have to be better. We got to do better on the basics, better on the little things. And uh, you know, hopefully, this, the, some of these games will turn into wins for us. Sam McEwen. Hey, Fred. Um, I think uh, opponents, Big Ten opponents, are shooting, I think, 61% inside the arc against you guys through five games. Obviously, that speaks to the uh, excellent players that you guys are facing. But uh, how do you shore up that defense a little bit? And, uh, and how much can Derek help with that? Yeah, you know, Derek, again, gives us another uh, big physical body that hopefully will help in that area. And that's it's what Purdue's going to do. They're going to throw it inside. I think they threw it to Williams 15 times on the left block in the second half against Rutgers. Uh, so that's going to be the game plan, is throwing it down there. Obviously, we've had different double team schemes. Uh, our rotations at times have been really good, and then at times we've had lapses in our rotations. We have to be more consistent with that. Those are drills that we do daily uh, because of teams' uh, ability to score on us right now inside. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, we've got to be better. We've got to make it more difficult, and then we have to secure the ball and rebound. Uh, you know That killed us in the second half uh, the other night by not blocking out, being consistent with our blockouts and securing the ball uh, where we made really good things happen because of Michigan State crashing four of their five players. Uh, you know, just again, the little things uh, like that, Sam, if we shore those up, hopefully we can get over the, uh, hopefully we can get over the top on a few of these games. I know the Big Ten is, is, is really, really good this year, but you have a lot of players who have not been through the Big Ten before. Um, maybe they've been through other leagues. It, it does seem that Trey does seem to have acclimated to this, to this style and this pace. But I'm thinking of guys like Trevor and Eduardo Andre and even Lat a little bit because he didn't play a ton at TCU. Are you seeing these guys like go, whoa, this is this is really good. These guys, these teams are hard. Uh, are you seeing them kind of feel that way about what they're experiencing or or you or they or they feel pretty good about being able to keep, you know, possession in possession on it? Yeah, I, I mean, Sam, you know, the, the numbers came out, the first uh, net numbers came out, 12 of the 14 or 51 or better. And that's just, that's absolutely incredible uh, where this league is right now. It's the best it's ever been. And, you know, it's uh, every night you step on the floor, it's going to be an incredible battle. It's going to be incredibly difficult. Uh, you prepare as well as you can. We talked about Ohio State. They were going to throw it inside. And guess what? They threw it inside and kicked our ass down there. So, you know, you just have to go out there and try to make it as difficult as possible. Uh, you know, hopefully they cooperate and miss some shots. You know, Henry hadn't made a shot in two or three weeks, and he goes out and he's, you know, absolutely kills us from the three-point line and, you know, was phenomenal inside as well. Uh, but, you know, we just have to go out again and, and continue to prepare. We've been right there in most of the games, really with exception of Ohio State. Uh, for the for the majority of the game, it's about cutting out the mistakes and cutting out the stretches that are costing us. You know, last three or four minutes of the first half the other night, first three or four minutes of the second half, it was a, I think a 17 point uh, swing. Uh, or they opened up a 17 point lead on us. It, it was seven at halftime, and they they you know torched us at the beginning of the half, and that was the second straight time that happened. Uh, the Michigan game. Uh, before that, but we've been right there. Even Michigan pulled back in, had a chance. Michigan State were two possession game under a minute, had a chance to cut it to one if we rebound the ball. Uh, Wisconsin, we're right there. So, you know, again, it's about going out there and finding a way to get a win to give our team a little confidence to know that we can do it. Joe Digit. Hey, Fred. Um, Purdue, like Nebraska, you know, shoots a lot of three-pointers in a game. Um, do they do anything unique to, to give themselves those looks? Is, is it going to be a challenge to stay connected on the perimeter? Well, they run 800 sets. Uh, you know, this team, I think, is more than anybody else in our league. They run more action than anybody else. And, you know, really, it's a conceptual game plan. Uh, this is how we're guarding this action. This is how we're guarding the post. This is how we're guarding the pick and roll. Because uh, if you try to go through everything, you're not, uh, you're not going to remember anything. So uh, they do a great job running their stuff. The pace they run their actions with is phenomenal. Uh, they've got guys that can shoot the ball at a high clip. Stefanovic is one of the top shooters in the country. And then when they throw it inside, you know, it's kind of a pick your poison deal. If you let them go uh, in their one-on-one, -on -one, they're really skilled and crafty and talented. Uh, you have to try to make them catch the ball out a little bit further so you can stay 
with the shooters. But, you know, give Coach Painter credit. They really run their actions uh, with great pace, and it's very hard to guard them. Andrew Ward. Hey, Fred, when you guys are kind of in a rut like you are right now, how much can bringing a guy like Derek back into the fold kind of kickstart you guys a little bit and give you a little boost of, of confidence? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. Everybody, you know, Derek's a very popular player in this team. He, he did a phenomenal job in the year and a half since he's been here in the sit-out of le continuing to lead through that. And, you know, being on the sidelines, sometimes you see it a little bit more clear what's going on out there on the floor and how you can come in and help fix it and correct some things. Uh, again, he gives us a, a, a really good finisher around the basket. He gives us experience, uh, you know, playing in the SEC for a couple years for a great coach in Rick Barnes. Uh, so, he'll, yeah, he'll absolutely help us. But as I said, you know, you can't expect Derek was sitting out as long as he has to come in and right away be a 20-point-per-game guy. I mean, he's going to help us in a lot of areas, but we have to give Derek time to get in shape and get his timing where we need it to be. But, you know, he's obviously a guy – uh, that we are all very excited to have back on the floor, from the coaches all the way down, uh, you know, to the players, to the to the support staff, because he does things the right way. And uh, you know, when you get a guy like that that works as hard as he does, he's an easy guy to root for. Um, so yeah, he's uh, absolutely excited to have him, and hopefully, he helps us, um, you know, win some of these games. Nothing. Any questions for Coach? I'll end Coach's part, and I'll bring up Derek. Thank you. Thank you.